Oh, what's up, YouTube? So this week we're going to have a little bit of a different video. We are on a job for Histina... Er, Histina. I messed that up. Historic Scenic Hudson. Every time I say that, I mess it up. I'm not even going to cut that out. I'm going to let you make fun of me for that. Um, but anyway, it's all trimming. Like hundreds of trees and we're just lifting the can canopies up so everything's like 6 to 10 foot off the ground. Uh, it's sort of a walking path to go down to the river. People go fishing, just hang out. I think they're going to put some barbecue pits in, stuff like that. Actually, when they're done, it's going to be a pretty nice place to go hang out, especially in the summertime. But there really is no content for uh, making a video. It's just it's, it's just boring. It's literally so boring that we've been drinking like six cups of coffee a day. It's super slow paced. It's just very boring. And we got to stop all the time because there's scientists down there that are doing some kind of eel um, study. So like every, you know, these guys come through and they have these big nets and they catch the eels and they test their blood, I guess, and weigh them. I don't, I don't really know. They're migratory eels. But anyway, so what we're going to do today is we are going to go over uh, our brand new 2024 Kubota SVL 75.3, which you guys already seen in a video, but I showed it in a manner I really didn't want to. So what I wanted to do is, is make a whole video about it, why I chose to buy the Kubota over a Bobcat. And uh, I'm a Bobcat guy, as you know, I have a lot of Bobcats if you watch my video. Um, but first, it's very rare that almost all my vehicles are in the yard at the same time. So I figured I would do a quick walk by of all the trucks and show you them because they're usually on jobs and we don't get this many trucks in the yard at one time here's our log truck which i'm sure you've seen on videos if you watch she's good you guys know stretch armstrong she's right there she's a little dirty she got to get cleaned but we've been so busy we haven't really been able to do anything about it got the old chip box here this is kevin's chip box you guys uh know kevin he's one of the foremen and if you don't know he's actually my stepson he's a badass dude he's been doing tree work fucking I don't know, probably, I started bringing on jobs when he was like 12. I think somewhere's around there, might even been younger. That's how fast time goes. So, got the we got the Ghost, this is Buster's truck. I don't know if you guys seen the lift, but this is a all access CMC 83 HD Plus. It's pretty badass, love that thing. We keep the mats right there on the trailer. You know the Dually, Dually's my favorite truck in the whole company. I absolutely love this truck. I, I honestly probably love this truck more than I love my TRX. I really do. It's comfortable. It's really quick for what it is. It's just a good looking truck. You can hook whatever you want to it. But at the same time, if you need to like wash it up and go do estimates, it looks good. You can take it to dinner. Like it's, it's just a classy truck. It's all around right in the middle. Here's the Hulk. This is now Dennis's truck. We just bought a new trailer actually. Um, little cam super line it's good for 6600 pounds it's only 12 foot long and it's perfect for the MT85 or our uh, Bobcat Sal L28 small articulated loader here we got our 75 foot bucket truck freight letter M2 this is the one that Nick runs currently right now I'm driving this ugly truck which you've seen uh, it's actually not a bad truck. It's just so damn ugly. Like I, it's just ugly. Got the chipper on the back there. Gooseneck. We are getting a new tube. So that's why the tube's out of that, if anybody noticed. We got our Sal L28 on the White Lightning, which just got the new tires. And we got our Great White over here, which is sort of our tow pig. I set this thing up pretty nice. This thing is... This thing will tow the max weight that Dodges uh, are available right now. I think it's good for like 44,000 pounds. I got it with the step body here so you could still tow the gooseneck, which is underneath this hatch right here. So let's get a shot from far back. So there's the fleet. Looking good. Looking good. They're usually not all here, so that's why I want to show you. I think we're actually missing another truck. Alright, so to start out the whole thing, we had a the last brand new skid steer we bought was a 20, I think it was a 2012 or 2013. It was a S650. It was not a track machine. And um 
it was all right, but it got stuck all the time, and I knew that the track was the way to go. So I knew I was immediately looking for a track machine. And being a Bobcat guy, all of our stuff is Bobcat, I decided to drive up to the Bobcat dealer. So I go up to the Bobcat dealer, and I'm looking at the Bobcats, and he's showing me everything. And when he pops the back open, one I noticed, and we'll go over it later in the video, just how crowded it was in the back when they opened the door. I mean, you couldn't stick your hand in there or nothing. Like, it's extremely crowded. They, they left no room for fixing anything. And I realized it wasn't a Kubota engine. So I said, oh, what, what is this? He says, it's Doosan. And I said, uh, okay, well, I don't want Doosan. I'm a Kubota guy. Uh, a lot of our equipment has Kubota, and I like Kubota. I like their engines. I don't know much about their actual equipment, but I like their engines. Everything uh, is very easy to work on. They're super reliable, and we can get our oil filters and fuel filters and most of the stuff we need from like the local Napa's. Doosan, I don't know much about, and you'd have to go to the dealership, which our dealership is 45 minutes away. Either way, there's two dealerships. So um, I didn't like that. I said, well, can I get a Kubota? He said, no. Uh, Doosan had, I think Doosan as a whole bought Bobcat. I could be wrong on that. So um, I said, ah, I don't really like that. So I started talking to him. We go over a few more things, and I really wasn't feeling it out, and I didn't want to jump the gun and just buy something just because I want a Bobcat. I've been trying not to be so brand loyal. So I ended up going to a buddy of mine who just got a brand new Kubota, got in it, drove it around, checked it out. First thing I noticed was just how comfortable the cab is, and we'll go over that in a minute. Some bugs flying around. So uh, I went to the Kubota dealer, and... I was there for about an hour and a half, went over a bunch of different things. And while I was there, being a Bobcat guy, I was just constantly like trying to find a reason to not like the machine. Like I was, I was, I was being very picky. I was like, I made the guy actually lift the entire cab up for me, which I'm going to show you because the thing is they come with warranties and they just want to, oh, it's warranty. You don't have to worry about it. Well, guess what? One day it's going to be out of warranty and I'm going to have to work on it, and I want to see how it's set up. I want to see if there's enough room because the way the Bobcats are set up, you have a hard time getting just a wrench in there. Like, it's, it's horrible. So anyway, first thing I want to do is go over some stats between the Kubota SVL 75.3 and the Bobcat T67. In order to do that, I'm going to enlist the help of my daughter, who's been hiding behind the machine the whole time. <laughs> Come here, girl. You can stand right here. So this is Summer. This is my daughter. Little mini version of me. And she wanted to help me out with this today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the stats, just regular old stats. So um, I'm going to do the Kubota, and Summer, you're going to do the what? What machine do you have? The Bobcat. She has the Bobcat T67, I think it is. Yes, T76. So the Bobcat T76 is the equivalent to the Kubota SVL 75.3. Now, I didn't look into any other brands. Some guys, like, I know there's, there's, there's at least six other ones out there. Um, but I wanted a Kubota engine, so why buy something else? I might as well just buy a Kubota, right? So first thing first, uh, the weight on the Kubota is 9,420 pounds verse... 10,250. Okay. So. so both machines are 74 horsepower, and they both do not have... DEF. DEF, which was very important to me. All right, so next stat here. Um, the Bobcat wins out a little bit on this, but the tipping load is 7,112 pounds on the Kubota versus the Bobcat which has a tipping load of 8,285 pounds. So 8,285 pounds. So, so the Bobcat um, tipping load is considerably higher. But go this way, scoop your butt this way. Step on here and then just walk down. So it's higher. There you go. Step and walk down. No. Oh, it's right, getting heavier and heavier. All right, here. Okay. So the rated operating capacity, what it could lift on the Kubota is 2,490 pounds versus the Bobcat at 2,900 2, pounds. 
So the Bobcat beats it out, but this wasn't really an important factor for me. And the reason being is in tree work, logs are not really that heavy, not, not compared to a uh, material you might be using on a job site when you're building a home or a house or whatever construction guys might be doing. They got big buckets in there. Sometimes they'll put like, um, I know they have uh, cement mixers. So you got the, the weight of the actual cement mixer, hydraulic cement mixer, plus the cement or your moving material like brick is super heavy. For us, wood is not that heavy. And we use a grapple, not a bucket to grab logs. So with that said, a log that would weigh over the 2,490 pounds, I would never be able to grab with my grapple anyway because its dimensions are not wide enough to grab that. So it would take literally a, a giant oak log that is uh, you know, four and a half foot wide to weigh that and my grapple's just not gonna, it's not big enough and they don't make grapples big enough. So I would say at max to be able to grab the size of a log Maybe I'm lifting 15, 1600 pounds, somewhere around there. I just, I don't see that I'm going to get a log in my grapple that weighs that. So weight for me in terms of lifting was not that important as it might be to a construction guy. So I just wanted to put that out there. So the next um, thing we have is track ground pressure. So again, like construction guys, they're on a spot where everything's just ripped up and torn up anyway because they probably just cleared the land or whatever might be going on with building a house. I don't build houses. Uh, they don't have to worry about what they're doing to the actual ground where they're working, I think, majority of the time. Me, I'm going on established lawns already. We have a very high clientele around here in terms of finances. These A lot of these people are rich. They don't want their perfect manicured lawns wrecked, but I got to get in there. Um, so we were worried about track ground pressure um so on the wide track Kubota, which is what we have the ground pressure was 4.7 psi versus the bobcat which is actually a stat that comes in a little lower 4.6 psi 4.6 psi for the bobcat now that's like right there which is actually quite surprising because that was a wide track bobcat and the weight again was considerably higher where the Kubota weighs in at 9,400 pounds, the Bobcat was, speak loud. 10,250. 10,250, so I'm surprised that their track ground pressure is the same. They must use a different system. I, I really don't have an answer for that. So um, if you see what's happening here, almost every stat, the Bobcat wins, but by a very slim margin. Um, Next thing was hydraulic flow. When it comes to high flow options, I needed something that's gonna be able to spin uh, what we use in tree work. So either like a flail mower type head um, for like underbrush or a straight fecon head for taking trees down. And you need about 25 gallons per minute. This machine high flow comes in at 29.8 gallons per minute where the Bobcat comes in at 30.3 gallons per minute, which would be plenty to carry a fecon. Yes, so so 30.3. Um, so again, they're right there, 29.8, 30.3, very close. Now here's one of the main deciding factors. After you look at all those stats and you see how close everything is, the Kubota before taxes comes in at $82,000 before taxes, where the Bobcat remembers a little bit more machine, but not much, comes in before taxes at $91,000. $91,000. So when you look at all the stats and you see that the Kubota is just slim right underneath that Bobcat T76, 76, which is the comparable model to the SBL 75-3, the price difference, it, it's just absurd to go with the Bobcat. Um, so after I went through all the stats, which that's the important stuff, I started actually going through the machine. Now we had talked about already uh, how open everything is. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna show you how open everything is. And the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the back door and I'll show you the engine bay. Now I wish I had a Bobcat here to show you it, but I don't, but I can promise you there's nowhere near as much room 
as there is on this SVL 75-3. All right, so we're at the back here. Someone's gonna open the door. Now, first thing you notice is it's not very hard to open. Summer's 10 <laughs> and she swung it right open and it's got a full tank of fuel. It's a little dirty right now. We're on a big clearing job if you watched uh, my uh, two videos ago. But what's nice about it is they did put the fuel tank on the back door, um, which I think is a 23 gallon. Yeah, it's a 23 gallon fuel tank. And it's on the back door to give it that extra weight in the back where the bobcat they ran theirs down low underneath the engine um so again if you see in here there's considerable amount of room you have your filters here your battery uh on the bobcat and i'm not trying to pick on bobcat i'm just speaking the truth you can't get to the battery on a bobcat at all it is so buried even jump starting jump starting it is a pain in the butt and here your battery is right there you can get to whatever you want it's it's very easy you got your fuel filters, oil filters, everything right here, readily accessible, very easy. Air filters here. You could just see the amount of room in this machine. Um, and what they also did that they set up, which is nice, go ahead and shut the door for me, Summer. Yes. Yep, shut it good. There you go. They set it up in a manner where you can get fuel without opening the door. So on our last skid steer that we had, which was the Bobcat, you had to open the door to fill it, and sometimes what would happen is if somebody ran the chain wrong or something, not wrong, but if the hook was up too high, it would be in the way of the door, and you'd have to actually take a chain off in order to open the door to fill. So I like that Kubota put the fuel cap where you can fill it up without opening the entire door. Now, while we're talking about fuel, which I thought was awesome, and here I go, bad mouth and Bobcat again, but the Bobcat, you don't know if you don't know when you're filling it when it's going to be full and it, it like gushes out on you it, it's if you're filling it and it gets full it'll actually shoot fuel back out the filler housing and it'll shoot all over you and the machine and it's hard to see the uh fuel indicator on the bobcat from outside the machine so what Kubota did is they put an audible alarm in and it beeps continuously till it's a full beep so you know when it's done being full so i thought that was a pretty cool option here now the Bobcat has this reverse fan. When you're on a job site, it gets real dirty. It's sucking up a bunch of stuff. There's leaves and everything gets sort of st stuck here when it's sucking in the air. So what happens is on the Kubota, they have a reverse fan thruster uh, and you could set it for a certain amount of time. We have it set for every 30 minutes. And what happens is the fan will shut off, reverse and blow everything backwards out of it. So things don't just get sucked here and clogged out which is a pretty nice option it's an expensive option and they're putting them on all the bob or all the kubotas so you can't get away with it you probably have to order one without it if you didn't want that feature but i didn't care about it first and then uh when we started using it and you would be looking behind you while you're driving you would see stuff sucked all here and then the fan would turn on and kick it all out just to keep everything open and clean so i like that so the next thing about the Kubota that I liked, and I honestly cannot remember if the T67, was it T67 or T76? T76. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Um, I can't remember how the track system was set up, but I do know because we often use my uncle's um, T770, which I think is only two years old. It's either 22 or 23 model, one of the two. But the wall up here, some, can you grab the camera and just bring it closer here? Yes. So the wall right here, here, is a lot closer to the track setup and mud gets stuck in here very easily where here you can see there's quite a bit of a hole and the mud sort of sits up here and falls off either way. And what I like about it versus a Bobcat, it's sort of this, uh, what kind of shape would you call this? Some, um, it's almost like a triangular. It's like a cylinder. No, it's yeah, yeah it's, like, it's, like it's like a triangle with like a round top. It's, almost. it's like a triangular cylinder, basically. Yeah. So it's so so a lot of mud and stuff ends up falling right off, especially once you uh, start going quick. Which this machine is actually very fast for a skid steer. But any anyway, everything falls through here. Now the other thing that I liked here is that these roller wheels, those are all sealed 
they don't have bearings or anything in them so when those go bad you basically just you're just gonna pull that wheel out and put a new wheel in and slide the bolt in and you're good to go where we've actually done them on the Bobcats and uh, you keep the main wheel and you have to press the bearings and everything out of them um, so it's a lot easier to replace these roller wheels than um, it would be on a Bobcat so that was another thing that I liked about the Kubota. And um, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna move into the interior. All right, so we'll talk about the interior. So when you sit in a Bobcat, um, it just doesn't feel natural. Things aren't naturally where you think they would be in terms of switches and stuff. There's a lot of reaching around. The control panels, a lot of buttons are up on the roof and they have this uh, safety bar that you have to pull down. It's a full unit. Um, it's just, I always thought they were comfortable until I sat in a Kubota. So we got Summer in here now. She is in the machine. And just give me, you're not an operator, Summer, but your first thoughts on the machine. Well, the seat is more comfortable than my at-home couch. Oh, that's which good. Which sucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sticks are very wiggly. <laughs> It has like a tablet screen right here. I think it's cool. This seat is bouncy too. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> well, that's because you don't weigh enough. Yeah. But the seat, I promise you, is comfortable. If you weigh anything over 70 pounds, it's comfortable. Um, these, the one in the Bobcat, I've been one before. It's actually a pull-down one where it's one piece. But the thing I like about this is because it's easy access and it's two pieces. So you could pull one up and put the other one down. Yeah, it honestly makes a lot more sense. And what's nice about it is back here where your elbows naturally fall when you're grabbing the stick. Grab the stick, Summer. On your left, grab the control stick. Your elbows naturally fall on this flat spot. Move your arm. They fall right there, and, and it's very it's it's very comfortable when you're operating. Where the Bobcat has this big um, rubber thing around it, but then it just goes to like a tubular bar, and your elbows are sort of just sitting on them. Now I know it probably sounds silly because it's a work machine; you're here to work. But if you're in one for three or four hours, why not make it comfortable? And this machine is a hundred percent comfortable to run. All right, so the next thing about the interior, which is massive, like massive. On a Bobcat, if you ever run a Bobcat, the doors swing open like a door, a natural door. And what happens is, even if you do not have um, a big attachment on, let's just say a bucket. What happens is, these arms here on a Bobcat in the bucket, when you try to swing the door open, if this is not, if the bucket that you have is not all the way down, flat on the ground, you can't get the door open. Now, if you watched some of my other videos, you'll see uh, when I was using a Fecon head, trees would fall, they'd fall across the front of the machine and you can't swing the door open so you get stuck in there, um, which is not cool. So what Kubota did is they made it so the door here actually goes up high, which is nice because it just comes down. Summer thought she was gonna get hit in the head. Push it some. She's just not strong enough. So the door goes up, which is very nice. And that way, if the bucket's up in the air, whatever you're doing, it doesn't matter if it's flat or not. If it's not flat, doesn't matter. You can still open the door. So that is a huge difference over the Bobcat, which I really liked. Now, speed, track speed and everything is like awesome when you're moving around with this thing you could get to where you need to go uh on rabbit mode it it moves and it's very good at wheeling too very good at wheeling so uh what we'll do is actually we'll let summer drive it and we'll show you just how easy it is to actually um drive this thing now summer has operated bobcats before she's operated some equipment before she's pretty good on the sow she used to uh you did our uh, driveway in the snow with yes. that so so, when was the last time you were in a skid steer? The last time I was in the skid steer was the time we came home from the Avenue and... Oh, and then you were driving. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's been a while, but did you drive it that night? Yes. So, it's been like two months. Now, I don't have the throttle up at all. That way she can't go crazy.
Good job. Go over there. Now, if a 10-year-old could figure it out, you could figure it out. It's, it's very user-friendly, easy to run. She has drove them before, but like I said, she's only 10. Back up. Now with your other stick, put your boom back down. All right. Now you hit the start stop button and it'll shut it off. What? Now it's off. So that's the basic rundown of the Kubota. Uh, what I would like to do now is we are going to pop up the entire cab and show you how that looks. So what did you just say when I lifted the cab up? That's something. <laughs> All right. So get ready for this, boys, because this is my favorite part. Look at the amount of room in here. It's insane. I mean, there's literally, if you've ever seen under the cab of a bobcat, you couldn't stick a finger anywhere. And look at the amount of room in here. I mean, it's, it's insane. Your hydraulic filters are right there. Everything on this machine, I feel like they really thought about who is going to be working on it. How could they make it easier to work on it? Because this is just, this is unreal. When he lifted this for me at the Kubota dealership, I was I was dumbfounded. I stared at it for, I stared at it. It's crazy. And if you open the back door, some go open that back door again. If you open the back door, you can actually see through the machine. So she just opened it. I don't know if it shows on camera, but I can see right through the machine. I mean, it's, it's clear as day. Now, what I like they did too with this one is... They left the footwell onto the machine and it actually goes up with the machine, which is nice for cleaning and leaves more room in there when you do got to work in there. So if you see, you can see right through the machine. You can see daylight right through the machine. You're not getting that on a Bobcat. Go ahead, son. You can shut that. Now, in order to lift this cab, it's only two 15 16 bolts. Um, and this is all it is very easy very easy now if i'm not mistaken they could change because my last skid steer was a s655 or s6 something like that i forget now i think it had two um bolts here um or they were studs and you had to put a nut on them it wasn't that hard either but um it definitely took a couple guys to lift it up where this one i just lifted up myself it's got these nice pistons and a lockout system which is pretty nice and uh to put it back down is just as easy you basically just flip this flip this red tab over here and pick it up and this slides back and you drop it pretty easy pretty easy system nice and easy to clean it's just overall i i really think they did a good job with this machine now, what we'll do before we round this out is we're going to go over my two dislikes about this machine. I do have two dislikes about this machine. I think they're going to be a little petty, but let me get this uh, thing back down and then we'll, um, we'll show you my two dislikes. All right, so we're now inside the machine. I'm going to show you my two gripes. And they are very petty, but I just don't understand. So, like the bobcat obviously you have hydraulic connects um for whatever you're using so you know you have these connects here you hit a button they come up and you can put whatever attachment you want on it and it works very well I'm not complaining about that but what i am complaining about is the button the button is absolutely horrible you have to pull this stupid little thing back and you rocking it forward is not a problem but you have to almost grab it and wiggle it to pull it back because of some kind of stupid safety lock that they put on there. Now, I understand that they put a safety lock on because they don't want you accidentally hitting the button while it's up in the air with maybe a load on it or something and falling off. But at some point, we have to like uh, use common sense and just think about what we're doing and, and not be uh, misplacing where you are because this is just this is just it's an annoying rocker switch and it gets stuck um i just really dislike the design i wish they would have took this and put it anywhere else in the cab 
where it wasn't somewhere where your wrist could hit it and disconnect it. I mean, they, they literally could have put it anywhere. I won't... I, I like the, they have it over here right here on the Bobcat out of the way so you can't accidentally hit it so I really wish they would have uh, I really wish they would have moved that I do not like that and next again is Petty but the cup holders back here and it's very annoying because either way if you're using your right hand you have to almost do a full 360 and rip your spinal cord in half to grab your Pepsi it just doesn't make sense and furthermore if you want to grab it with your left hand you have to come across your face and punch yourself in the mouth to grab your red bull it just doesn't make sense what are you laughing at summer <laughs> so i i i don't like that at all i really don't like that but other than that that's really the only gripes that i have the floor pan here comes out very nicely it's easy to vacuum and you could pop it back in um so, I mean, if that's all I got to complain about, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's it. I have a toggle switch I don't like and a absolutely horribly placed cup holder. So, um, that's that. All right, so at the beginning of the video, or it wasn't even the beginning, it was like in the middle of the video, I told you this thing re wheelie's really good. So, I'm going to pop off a wheelie for you quick and then we're going to end the video. father who owns a tree company hey everyone thanks for watching please subscribe if you didn't like the video you don't have to subscribe but it would really help my dad out thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye